Hello and welcome to Talent Talk. I um, want to thank you for joining us again for this episode today. We have a very special special guest with us today, Chief McGee. He's the chief of um, campus police here on campus. Um, just a real quick bio on Chief. Um, he graduated from Richlands High School in 1998. Right out of high school, we jumped straight into the Navy. Um, spent five years in the Navy. While he was on duty, 9-11 actually happened, which caused him to be on duty for an extra year. Was stationed in Virginia Beach, but actually was all over the world um, during his time. Um, after he got out, he moved around for a while, South Carolina, Richmond, several other places before coming back home. Um, he tried a different career, several different career paths before he got into to what he wanted to do into law enforcement. Um, he was a re- regional manager for a company called Velux in South Carolina and then decided that Richmond and, and being and all that was, just wasn't for him. He was a police officer for 16 years, started out with the Tazewell County Sheriff's Office, um, went to the Richlands PD for 13 years, was a sergeant for the last four years, and then he came here as our chief. Um, He was a special ops emergency response team um, member for several years. Um, SWAT, um, would be another name for that, was trained as a bomb detecting canine handler and had his um, canine partner named Nitro. Um, He's a certified taser instructor. Um, and has been tased multiple times himself in order to become a certified tasing instructor. Um, he loves to hike, to fish, to camp. Um, he's an avid fan of Star Wars, Harry Potter, um, SpaceX, and all things space. And he is our guest today, hey, Chief thank McGee. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. Um, your time is definitely of a premium on what you do on campus. Um, so thanks for, for joining us today. Um, here on Talent Talk, we like to jump straight in, and I start off with hard questions right off the bat. Right. So, um, our job today is to learn as much about you as we can. So, tell me the three most influential people in your life and how they've impacted you. You know, I, I've had such a wide career of people, and I, I've had tons of mentors. I think the first mentor that I could really think about that impacted kind of like my life trajectory would be uh, a man named Brad Thayer. And Brad was a um, sergeant in the Air Force, but he also taught the Richlands ROTC department. So uh, Sergeant Thayer had uh, a huge impact on me and my outlook on public service and serving a community and serving a, a thought process that was bigger than I was. So he would probably be the first. Um, my mother would be my second. Uh, she's kind of always been my rock on everything. Uh, just a um, hardworking woman who, you know, raised two kids. And, and I always thought that she had her stuff together until I got older. And then, you know, everything's a, a challenge. But she was fantastic. And then, of course, my wife. So I've been with my wife for almost 20 years now. So Awesome. Awesome. Three very important people. Yes, yes, Three very yes. very important people. So you have been working with us as chief of police for how long? Uh, Roughly almost 90 days, so three months. Three months. What is your vision for the police police department here on campus? I think the biggest vision for the police department is just to have a really diverse police department that not only our faculty and our staff can have faith and trust in on any situation, but also our students too. I think it's really important for us to have a interaction with our students. I think it's really important for us to get to know our students. And I think it's really important for them if they have a problem or they have an issue or a concern, I feel like if they can come to us and express their concern, um, that is a key relationship going forward with, with campus police. Awesome. I mean, you've already done some rearranging in there. If you've not had a chance, if you've been on campus, to go by and see um, the police department, please swing by because it, it looks amazing. Um, you've lived everywhere, been everywhere. What is your favorite place besides Southwest Virginia that you've lived? Hmm. So I have been in probably 21 different countries. I've lived everywhere from Southwest Virginia to Northern Virginia to um, overseas. Um, there's so many. I have a few favorite places. I think, though, my favorite is a place in the Mediterranean called uh, La Madalena, which is sets in Corsica. 
and it's a really small rural quaint town almost sicilian in culture but they have cobblestone streets and they take their traditional siestas where at 10 o'clock in the morning everything shuts down everybody prepares lunch everybody comes out into the streets everybody shares lunch everybody catches up on the the items for today and then they go back to work but uh white sand beaches till green water um just a beautiful climate but you know probably my favorite place of anywhere in the world and you know I've, I've been places as far as Dubrovnik Croatia split Croatia um, Venice Italy Rome Italy um, I spent um, New Year's Eve of the millennia in Paris underneath the Eiffel Tower <laughs> so I have a, a vast experience with my travels so as you just gave me retirement goals um, <laughs> somewhere that I want to go so, being on campus for three months, so far, we, do, we don't do soap boxes. We do squawk boxes. Right. So, if you're going to get on your squawk box about your biggest pet peeve, what would it be? I think the biggest pet peeve for me, and, and I, I think this is the majority of law enforcement in general, is, is <laughs> handicapped parking. I, that is my biggest pet peeve. I know that uh, we're we're pretty lax on our, our parking policy at this point, and we're looking at revamping that whole parking issue and and trying to go down that road. But I think the one thing that I would I would say is handicap parking. You know, um, those spaces are reserved for for true people with disabilities and needs, and we need to make sure that you know we're thinking about you know their welfare as far as getting access to the buildings, having places to park, and and how hard it is for some people to you know roll a wheelchair completely across the parking lot. So I think that would probably be my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you this question, and I. I gave you these questions before. I'm going to change this one just slightly. Um, your biggest, your most influential or biggest mentor in your, your law enforcement career, who would that be? Mm-hmm. I would say there, there's, there's a ton. <laughs> there's a few. But I think that the, probably the most... If, hmm, that's a really tough question. I think I have a few, um, but I can say that from my personal perspective, one of the most influential people to me would be William Puckett. So William Puckett was a, a chief of police for 20 years. Um, he's got a long law enforcement career of 40 some years. Um, he just absolutely is rock star in Southwest Virginia. Uh, when when you're think, thinking about um, long-term law enforcement officers who have been around for a long time. Most law enforcement officers, you know, they do 20 years and they're done. Um, I think I've known probably 10 or 15 that have done 30, 40, 45, 42 years, long, really careers. But I think that in general, I have a, a ton. And one of another influential person uh, is Doug Scales. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with Doug, but Doug actually got his start here at Southwest Virginia Community College. Okay. Doug is now the executive or one of the assistant executive directors of the Southwest Virginia uh, Criminal Justice Training Academy, which is in Bristol. And he that is our version of basic training. But Doug has been a fantastic part of my life as far as um, – thinking about future goals and things like that. And he's also from Russell County too. So he's, he's a Russell County resident. He started his career here at Southwest and, you know, I, I think highly of Mr. Scales. Awesome. It's too, it's really cool to hear one of our, our alumni kind of going out and impacting and then watching that impact kind of circle back. Yes. And impact campus. Now we've hit the kind of the, professional history and all that good stuff. But I really want to get to know you a little bit. So um, in our talks before and in our talks um, just since you've worked here, I know you I know you a little bit better than a lot of people do. Um, I know that you, like me, enjoy video games and, and Star Wars and that kind of stuff. Right now, can you tell me about a book you're reading, a podcast you're listening to, a game you're playing, 
series you're watching? So right now, I mean, I've got a ton of a, a ton of hobbies. I think that, um, of course, I'm an Xbox fan, so I've got to I've got to rock my Series X. Uh, right now, I'm playing Elden Ring, so I have <laughs> a ton of hours on Elden Ring. I'm getting ready to probably finish that up and then transfer to Hogwarts Legacy play it for a while um i've been really itching to get my hands on <laughs> some hogwarts I, I i'm huge harry potter buff um i think one of the books that i'm reading right now is a book by jocko willingson and it's called the dichotomy of leadership so it talks about um high stress situations um, in those leadership's ability, and, and Jocko was a former Navy SEAL, but he has a, uh, uh, a very interesting take on leadership and, and what that in details. So, <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Um, Elden Ring, so tell that you like to stretch your patience. I love Elden Ring. I love anything with a challenge, and I think that kind of in this new modern era, I love games that, you know, <sighs> You don't play and you just die through and just restart. Elden Ring is such a challenge. Uh, so it it makes me think out of the box, but it also helps me decompress too. So it, it relieves my stress, putting stress into something else. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's called displacement when we take our stress and just yeah. dump it on something yes. else. So other than what you're doing right now, because you've tried several other, other careers, if you were going to be something different, if you woke up in the morning, you could be anything you wanted to be. It didn't matter career, money. We're going to pretend like you know you're Elon Musk. You're independently wealthy. Um, it didn't matter about education. What would you do? What would be a, a career outside of law enforcement? I think I would probably go into nursing. Uh, I think that not only the nursing program here at Southwest is rock star fantastic. Um, their nursing program has a reputation for having excellence and anyone that I have known in the medical field always strives to either go through Southwest RN program but I truly like helping people and I think that most of my life I've always spent in public service in one way or another whether it's serving my country serving my community and I think that I would probably stay more with that theme um, nursing is is a very important job um and it helps a lot of people but at the same time i've I, it also what most people don't know is it pays really well so you can get stationed at the hospital but i have some friends now that do traveling nursing mm -hmm. i've got one friend right now that he is out in california and he's making about 162 dollars an hour so he's got a pull behind trailer camper. So instead of actually purchasing a home in California or a hotel, he just basically pulls his trailer from hospital to hospital to hospital doing contracts for six, eight weeks and then moving on. So it is kind of very interesting. That's awesome. It's like camping and nursing <laughs> all together. It is. It is. So I'm sure now this question may be loaded. and I'm sorry if it's loaded. It's okay. What, what do people public in general students misunderstand about you and your role the most i think that most people think that cops are unapproachable i think that they think that you know we're the man and that you know um we're not very lenient and we don't have a whole lot of discretion but i think that you know what we bring here to Southwest is emotion and empathy and discretion and understanding, you know, our, our students, our faculty and our staff's true needs and how to assist them in whatever decision that they have to make or help and assist them in wherever they need to be. And I, I think that that is probably the most that I can think about is most people just have their guard up when they come to cops. They just think that we're not there to help. But, you know, truly we are there to help. Um, I don't care if it is just trying to facilitate getting your car open because you've left your keys in your car. <laughs> or uh, you've got a flat tire and you don't know how to change your tire. Or, you know, simple tasks like that. More important tasks on the end. But I think that's probably... Uh, the biggest one. For, for those of you that don't know, um, Chief's first few days on campus, 
during what can only be described as a monsoon, we had someone <laughs> lock their keys in their car, and he went out in a rain jacket, and I mean, was soaking wet to the point where I think he had to change clothes. When yeah, he I did, I did. Um, but he got them in their car and got them taken care of. So, I did. Um, they're always here to help. Uh, our campus police are just top notch, absolutely top notch. If you could go back in time, pull up a DeLorean, hop in, you can go back to when you were in high school, pull yourself out your senior year and give one piece of advice, what would it be? Get your education. I think that that is the most important thing. No matter if you're thinking about military, no matter if you're thinking about um, law enforcement, no matter if you're thinking about anything, is education. And education truly matters. And I feel now I'm in my 40s. And I think that if I had to do it all over again, I would pull myself aside, sit myself down and say, listen, you know, love that you want to do the military, love that you want to serve your country, but, you know, uh, let's think about education. And education opens up opportunities for different jobs and different avenues of life. And education is universal. It it transcends uh, career lines. And what I mean by that is you can be educated in the military and be able to do certain jobs. But when you get out of the military, still being educated transcends into that civilian world to where it also opens you up for another set of jobs. So education is something that truly transcends any lines in whatever career path that you decide to do. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I'll ask everybody this question. Okay. So the coffee game has changed. Oh, yeah. Um, not only as of to as of right now, it, we got Starbucks, but our cafeteria has now got their espresso machine up and running. We're going to use Starbucks because it's kind of universal. Okay, you just roll up into Starbucks. What do you order? Mm, I've got two choices. The first one is going to be a true Cubano with a triple shot of espresso. If I'm, you know, I need a good pick me up. <laughs> uh, I think if I'm. Feeling a little bit more fruity, I'll probably hit the uh, straight caramel macchiato with a nice double shot on top of it. So yeah, I, can, I can get behind the caramel macchiato with a double shot um, of blonde espresso. So you lay oh, your yeah. on top. You know, it's all right. It's all right. I always got to hit my espresso. I, 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 it was funny because I had I was in Italy. You know, it's my first time in Italy, and I was probably 19 years old. And you know, I'm used to American coffee. You know, mm-hmm. straight black coffee. Nothing special, nothing fancy. So we were in a place called Trieste, Italy. And Trieste it has a little naval base there. And we pull in and we get what they call Liberty Call. So Liberty, you get to go out on town, you get to explore the city, things like that. So I go up to this little coffee shop and I order a coffee. Well, you know, Italian coffee is a lot different than American coffee. So, you know, I'm I'm expecting like a big mug of coffee to come out, and it's this tiny little itty bitty cup. And I'm like, this is cute. Where's the rest of it? <laughs> but when I sit down, it was straight espresso, and I wasn't. I've never I never had espresso, so I drink that espresso in like probably two seconds, and I'm like. You know, my eyes are going wide. My my speech is starting to be erratic. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I can see why it's such a small cup now. So That's, um, man, we were driving. Uh, I had a friend that had bought a car in Hershey. And so we left out of Abingdon, driving to Hershey, Pennsylvania. And we drove all the way up, got the vehicle, and drove all the way back. So we stopped at this little Starbucks on the way back, right outside of Blacksburg. And, you know, we didn't have Starbucks. So what's the strongest thing you got? I was like, espresso is the strongest thing. All right, give me that. It's like, how many shots? Four. <laughs> it's like, do you want anything in it? And I was like, <laughs> some cream? <laughs> yeah. Man. I could see sound when I came out of that place. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like vibrating hair, <laughs> down the road. It was great. Hair standing up on your head. Man, and I kept my head shaved. So. Hands at 10 and 2. Yep. Very very vigilant. That's so. it, man. That's it. It's awesome. I, I remember the first time. That's, 
thanks so much for being on Talent Talk. Um, if if they want to get in contact with you, if I'm on campus and my, I lock my keys in my car, how's the best way to get up with you? The best way is to call the campus police. So we have a, our, our phone number is 276-964-7603, or you can come by Buchanan 101. Um, we have tons of communication. However, I will say that right now we are not 24-hour operational. We hope to, in the future, um, by the summertime, get to operational 24 hours however if you have a true emergency and it cannot wait please dial 911 that, that's the biggest thing that i can tell you is you know we're, we're there if we need us and we're there to take care of any issues but if it's a true emergency dial 911 <clears throat> and what happens when you dial 911 is the Tazewell County Sheriff's Office operate the 911 center 911 will automatically dispatch us to the to the emergency so we, we will take care of that as well but if you have any questions comments please feel free to drop by my office door is always open so don't think that you're going to interrupt me by coming in if i'm on a zoom meeting whatever the case may be just pop in get to know us talk to us we have some f awesome faculty staff um we have a lot of new faces so please drop by um see our new space and get to know us a little bit and um, for those of you guys that haven't got to meet um, Officer Neil, Neil is a great guy. Um, uh, he, he, you guys are usually here about the same time. That's how I, I know Officer Neil as well. Um, and so he's always he's fun to talk to. Um, Officer Lawson's awesome. So you know, and I've known Neil for a long time, but uh, he, he's absolutely fantastic. And he's very hard to miss because he's six foot five. So <laughs> it's not it's not very hard to miss Mr. Lawson walking down the the hallway. It's so funny because it's here. Here's this great big guy who's <laughs> always smiling and always laughing. And so um, you guys, it's just a great place to hang out. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us. Um, for those of you. Um, watching talent talk if you have ideas um be sure to to check the show notes for places to send ideas for folks to have on talent talk um if there's topics you want us to cover um i can do we can do topics we can do interviews with people um we're here to kind of to kind of get you connected back to campus so um until we till we meet again um we'll see you on talent talk